Hey, it's good to see all of you here. Safe and sound. Hope you enjoyed your holiday weekend. I'm John Zadar, the host of On Top and Hot. This is July 5th. It is Tuesday. It's going to be a short week on the market. So what I like to do on this show is talk about penny stocks and OTC stocks that have got something going for them. Maybe it's the attention of the investors or a headline in a PR. Got to keep in mind though, penny stocks are not just on the OTC market. You can find these on any market. Penny stock is any stock under $5. And I love to trade those major market penny stocks because there's no transaction fees. I don't have to try to recoup my transaction fee in my profit before I'm making profit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> We are over here at the otcmarkets.com website. If you know me, you know this is where I do my due diligence, especially for OTC stocks. You see, FINRA and the SEC, they update this site every single day. And I haven't found another site that they do for every single OTC stock. In other words, it's never outdated. Imagine that. You come to a site, you look up information, and it's right the first time you find it. Why go to Google sorting through decades of old information, right? All right, so we're going to take a look here at the, oh, I need to refresh this, at how the OTC market finished today. You got to remember to refresh this page over here. You could be jumping to 100 pages and all sorts of stuff, but if you don't refresh the page, it won't actually change the numbers up here. I'm glad it changed because we were just looking at 3 billion shares. So today, we got our average back. We're at $2.1 billion average. That's what we normally do. So things are back in snap shape there. Our volume is kicked up. We've had three days of increase from six to seven to eight billion shares. Still way shy of the 15 billion we hit about eight, nine days ago. Our trades is kicked up. Boy, that's almost 100,000 extra shares that we have sold since last Friday. So there was some more activity on the market today, but we need more. More, I tell you. All right, I've got three stocks I'm going to share with you today. These are stocks that had lots of trades. That's my magic potion ingredient. I'm looking for stocks that do have profits. I am looking for stocks that have uh, large volume, but I'm also looking for stocks that have lots of trades. Trades is the magic number because that's how many people kind of is around it. The more trades, the more people. The more people, the more trade action. You're going to hear me say that all the time because that's where you get your gains when you have a crowd of people bidding. Think of the Wall Street floor. Buy, 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 sell, sell, buy, sell. That's what you want. You want that around your stock. That's how you're going to make money. All right, let's go jump into them right now. We are going to be taking a look at three stocks that were the highest traded stocks on the OTC market. I mean, they literally had the most trades, hundreds of trades each. And we're going to be looking at them from the most trades down. Now, that's a big deal to me. Not just how much volume and how much gains, but how many people are trading that stock. Now, if it has 200 trades, I don't know that it was 200 people, but I know it's more than five or 10. There's probably 100 plus people trading that stock. And those are the stocks that are going to get price action. So those are the ones we're keeping our eye on. And I got three of them. First one we're taking a look at here is ticker CHNC, China Infrastructure Construction Core. Now, this doesn't have any hard catalysts soft catalyst. What I mean by that is there's no filings, there's no press release out, but there's a lot of buzz and all that buzz has caused a lot of investor attention, which has got it running. So we might as well look at it and maybe play it if it looks good. So CHNC finished today at 0042 with over 90% gains. She's on the pink tier in current and she has the two tick marks I tell you to look for, verified profile and a transfer agent verified. With a pink, this is always valuable. Pinks don't come with a lot of verified information. They normally give us what's called disclosures for financials. They're not audited. There's nobody professional looking at it. It's actually the management doing the auditing and just giving us the numbers and telling us what's up. And we just got to take their word for it. Maybe they make an honest mistake. Maybe they lie. In either case, you've just got to take their word for it. So when you get verified information, you're ahead of the game right there. So I like to see these on pinks. Now, don't let that deter you from a day trade. If you don't see these here, well, you're not in the stock long enough for anything to really make a whole lot of difference. So if you're just looking for stocks to get in, take some money and get out, a lot of these facts don't even matter. So this is basically a shell company, but they're not. 
I mean, I've looked around to see what they do and it looks like they're doing more education in the cannabis sector in Latin American countries. That's what it looks like to me. Now, ultimately, it sounds like they want to start moving products ultimately, but I don't see that happening right now. However, there seems to be a lot of attention around this, and I'll show you the tidbits of information that have people talking. And it is over at Twitter. That is where I get most of the buzz. So, what was the relative volume around this company today? Let's see here. Normally, we're doing just about 9 million. <laughs> wow, that is a big jump. 238 million shares today. Jump from 9 million to that without any real catalyst, just buzz. Let me tell you, if you hear a swarm of bees coming, are you really going to look to see where they're coming from or are you just going to get inside? Right, people are moving. They don't see a lot, but they hear it. Buzz. Share structure, what do we got? Oh, we got a ton of shares in the float. 1.7 billion shares, ton of shares. They got 20 billion authorized less than half of that is on the market. So they're not diluted, they just don't have a lot of value with that many shares. So I don't know what's gonna happen with that. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, there is a tidbit of information we're gonna get here when we look at the news. Financials, well they are making some money. Now they tell us to put three zeros behind these numbers here. So at the end of uh, May, Wow, May of last year, they had about three quarter million. Didn't cost them a red cent. Cost of revenue is zero. So, like I said, if you're doing education, well, that's just man hours, isn't it? You don't have to pay anything out to get that education. So, if that's what they're doing, that's where they're making their money. And they made about three quarter million dollars uh, last year. Anything quarterly? This year, yeah, they've got $64,000 as the end of February of this year so they do have money coming in not a lot of it we don't see a whole ton here and i haven't seen a lot of speculation about revenues increasing either disclosures financials are all caught up because they are current and nothing since 2015 on the other sec filings all right so let's just jump on over to that news so they've got news here most of it is pretty current yeah we're going back to october of 2021 here and you can see i've highlighted a few pieces of news uh, chnc continues to position itself as columbia's quintential medical cannabis educator um, then you see here chnc announces return of a half a billion shares so the share count is coming down a little bit, but from what I read, that is going to affect the outstanding shares. They've got close to nine billion, so they're gonna have a half a billion come off of that. But that doesn't change anything for me and you as an investor, so that really shouldn't be anything to cause the price to rise. That was back in March, we had that news. And then you have a letter from the desk of the CEO, which came out in April, and in this, he tells us a lot of stuff about the company changing their name and things that are going on, but not a lot of information. But you know where I got a lot of information and I haven't tracked it all down? I haven't verified it all. This is what I call soft leads. I run over to Twitter and Twitter has a bunch of information, especially today. There was lots of tweets today. But this one came from Tactical Trading. He tells us here that CHNC eliminated their debt have a float of 1.7 billion 66 percent insider ownership of the outstanding shares and they got 9 billion so somebody owns what 5.5 uh, billion insider does name change was approved for cannabis bioscience holdings conducting trials for cancer and respiratory illness they have audited financials 2600 increase in sales and multiple subsidiaries. Then another tweet tells us a little bit more here. The company has confirmed no toxic debt, notes, dilution, or reverse splits. These are all good things, and I haven't verified any of them, but now you can at least see if it's right. You know what to look for. When companies are in the middle of a financial audit, it is advised to not release new information. New information. What they're basically saying is that they're going through an audit and they're not going to say anything while they're doing that. So that could be a reason why it's quiet. Now, we've seen some stuff here about name change. I know they're changing their ticker as well. 
but I want you to see an article I found here. It's just real quick and brief. China Infrastructure Group rose on Monday after the company announced it's changing its name to Cannabis Bioscience International Holdings. China Infrastructure Group strongly believes the updated name better reflects the nature of its activities. It is operating in several foreign countries such as Europe, Latin America, Middle East, and the USA, means that its name should reflect a worldly footprint. Then I noticed that this article came out a whole year ago, June of 2021. So the news about the name change, the ticker change, all this stuff, it's really old news, isn't it? I mean, it's been in the works and it's not like anybody has said it's finished. It's a done deal. Matter of fact, when you look at the ticker, you still see the old ticker. You still see the old name. So nothing has changed yet, right? So it's really old news to rehashing. They're showing everybody that it is a good, clean company, but it's not even a shell company. It's not like a new company is coming in and going to give them a whole lot of extra value. I'm not trying to play it down, but I'm not going to play it up either. It's a lot of old news being rehashed, showing off the company's highlights. They do have some good things going for them. Revenue isn't one of them though, but they're sitting in a good position. Now, if this actually finishes this cannabis bioscience name change, if there is a change of operation, if they do more than just educate and start moving products of some sort, growing something, maybe something big, a real catalyst will come into play. But right now we're looking at it just for this jump, just for the surge. As long as other people are going to put their money into it and keep it moving up, that's an opportunity for us to grab it before it starts coming back down. Let's go take a look at that chart right now. Not actually a bad looking chart right now for CHNC. This is a one year, one day chart on Think or Swim. It's a free trading platform. If you need one or want a backup, I got this over at TD Ameritrade just for signing up for a free trading account. You don't even have to actually trade with them. Just keep your account open and you can use Think or Swim just like me. So this is a one year, one day chart. And I opened it up to a year because I saw my support resistance lines here over in our area, but they were going to the left. So I wanted to see the last time I looked at this because I normally start my lines in the time period I'm at. I don't tell them to keep going left, but I do tell them to run on and run on and run on. And I started these all the way back here in August, which was the last time we looked at it. And it looks like we caught her just after a little bit of rise, just before she was approaching her 200 back then. And boy, she took off. We caught this at two and a half cents and she went to almost seven cents. So you're looking at about 300% run right after we looked at it. Not a bad run at all. And that's where these support resistances came in. Now, it's curious, you gotta remember, I drew these back here, but they just keep on going and just don't stop until I turn them off. Well, look where the price went. You can see it hit these lines and then it kinda got stuck in there, fell, came back, got stuck in there, fell, got stuck in there. So these lines, and I can't tell you exactly where I drew them, it was probably the top and the bottom of the surge of that day. That's what I normally do. Uh, but I can't get the small bar chart in there without some tweaking, so I really can't tell. But I'm presuming that's what that is. And you can see, it definitely had influence on prices through the months to come. Not today, though. No, not today. She ripped right through that without any problem whatsoever. Let's take a look at that 20-day, one-hour view. So she wasn't doing a whole heck of a lot of anything here. She was riding underneath the 200, worked her way up on top of the 200, has been sitting there for three weeks almost, and the last two days, without any catalyst, just buzz picking up, it started to climb. A little bit yesterday, which, you know, for no catalyst is great. You went from a penny and a half up to uh oh it's not a penny and a half it's double zero one five so it's one five up to uh two two so you had about 30 percent gains yesterday and then today you went from that 22 up to 44. that's a hundred percent i'm just dropping the zeros off 22 to 44 100 percent and she's stuck up there she is still up there technicals are ripping on the one hour, everything is up on top and not bad. Two out of three are pointed up and one is level, which is okay. So she looks strong and the volume is really hot today, 
for no catalyst. Definitely impressive. Five day, five minute. So there's yesterday's climb. Approach this area. Boy, it's funny. Once it hit this area, it shot, didn't it? I mean, it's almost like those lines from that time I drew them had a lot of influence here. I'm just saying. It's, it could be coincidental. But boy, once it got above these supports and resistances, it caught some oomph and took off. And she did settle back down. She settled here on the 50. She went up and straight now. Not straight, but she did go sideways instead of falling, which is my point. It could have fallen all the way back down to the 50 and did some radical bounce, but instead it went sideways the hard way until it met the 50. It waited for the 50 to come to it, and then it bounced off of it. Not as much a reflective, you know, because the angle's not, so it was just a nice smooth skip. You know, you come down hard, it bounces hard. If you come in at an angle, it bounces off nice at an angle. And that's what you got there, a nice reflect right off of the 50, shooting up. Here comes our 200. E gads, I really don't want to see that. I don't. This is way down here. And I have a habit, I do, have a habit of finding these coming on these charts. And when they appear on the chart for some silly reason, the price seems to gravitate to it, whether it be up or down. For some reason, the price starts to go to it. So like, it was kind of respecting the 50 here, right? It was waiting for the 50, but now there's a bigger boy in town. It may start paying homage to this one. So this could fall. It possibly could fall simply because of that, and I'm not happy to hear that. But the whole point with this stock is there is no real catalyst. There is no real new news. We're waiting for the progression of news that came a year ago. So the buzz that's on Twitter right now, and there were a lot of tweets, a lot of people talking about it, and unless you do your DD, you don't know that this is old news, and we haven't seen anything new about it. Now, the company themselves, they do have a Twitter account. I did read it. They don't have anything specific. They are in constant communication with their investors, but they're not saying a whole bunch. So I couldn't get anything from them, which is really why I went over to Twitter accounts outside of the companies to get some details. But it, don't go trusting those details as gold. They're just good leads to start you off. But the whole point of this stock is to watch the run. If the heat keeps coming in, if the volume keeps coming in, if the trades keep coming in. And folks, I'll show you where I get that. Over here at the OTC markets, current market. It's going to open up this page. We want to look at advancers in the middle. I go to all, click all, hit that more button. Now the whole page is advancers. They give you all the information you're normally looking for. And right there is the magic column, my folks, trades right there click that more button and it'll just keep kicking starts off at the highest change percentage change at the top and works its way down and this is every stock on the entire otc market and it's pretty much live there is a 15 minute delay on it but i use it to focus in it's like seeing fish jump out of the water that's a good place to take your boat and that's what we're looking for where's the fishes right there chnc wow I thought this had over 800. Well, it does. <laughs> it does have over 800. But that was the last time I looked at it. Day's end, she's got 1,264 trades. How many people do you think were around this stock today? Maybe 1,000? Maybe just 500? Folks, I will go trade a stock with 500 traders on it any day of the week. You don't see a lot of high number trades like that, do you? No. No, that is rare. I'm surprised to see it actually got that high. So this is where you come get that information. You can come over here, otcmarkets.com website. It starts up at 10 to 10. As I said, there's a 15-minute delay. So by the time you see it, whatever is running has already started running. And you're going to come over here, and you're not going to see huge numbers, but you might see something with an 8 or a 16. And look, at the end of the day, most of these are still single-digit numbers. So when you come here early in the morning, 10 to 10, 10 in the morning, and you see something with the 16, that's probably a beginner of a runner. Then just come on over here. Now, don't look at the black diamonds. Those are experts. We can't trade them. They got pulled off the market for being late on their filings. But you find one down here and you say, there's a 12. Come over there. Click it. It'll open up. Come over here and check the news, right? See if there's any. Show them the news. 
<laughs> click the news see if there's anything new right here anything new right here 628 the new one defense technologies Fenor approves reverse split hey so we got a reverse split over here on DTIID if you're interested then you come over to disclosures we know the filings are current if it's current so you don't have to spend any time there and then you look for 8Ks. You look for filings that have come out here recently. Click that bad boy, and you know what? Most 8Ks are pretty short. This one actually gives you a news press in it. How nice is that? And this one happens to be all about that reverse stock split, which was on June 28th. And so, you know, this is where you get the big news. Reverse stock split, um, acquisitions, reverse mergers. So I always... Come over here and check those places. Then if you can't find anything here, jump on over to Twitter. See what Twitter has got to say. Put yourself a dollar sign in up there and whatever the ticker is and voila, you can get information. And whatever you put in, I don't know how well you know Twitter, but you've got popular, which is top, which is great. You get to see what most people are talking about, which is what buzz is. But if you want to see the current news, what has actually happened here recently, hit latest. And that, that'll bring up the most recent posts, and they're all in chronological order. And you can see what happened today rather than having to skip around looking for the most current news. And that's what you do. But you know what? If you don't find anything here at Twitter, if you don't find anything over here in the news, you don't find anything over here in disclosures, who cares? If the stock is running, if it is moving, if you're on this page over here and you see that it is already up 400% and it's had 16 trades, well, go jump into it. <laughs> go check it out. Just run over to the chart and see what it looks like. You know what a hot chart looks like. If it looks like it has potential to run some more, get in. You don't have to know what the catalyst is to make money. You just have to find a train that's going the same direction you want and jump on and jump off before it misses your point of uh, gains to losses. You don't want it going too fast, right? You don't want to jump off and get hurt. And that's what normally happens when it changes direction. It gets real fast. So that's the magic, folks. That's what it's all about. And that's what CHNC has got to offer right now. It has investor sentiment. Watch that and you may get some gains tomorrow or the next day. All right, let's go take a look at the next stock. This is another stock that had a lot of trades today, roughly 640. Last time I looked at it, around 2 o'clock. I don't know what it finished the day at. And she too has, well, I guess you could call it soft catalyst. I mean, there were hard facts that came out today, but it didn't come out via a press release or a filing. It came through Twitter. And I'll share that with you here in just a minute. So this is ticker SRNW, Stratos Renewable Core. She finished the day at $2.48 with 33% gains. She's on the pink tier and current, has a transfer agent, but not yet a verified profile. And I expect that to be coming soon because this is still being worked on by George Sharp. You can see it's a shell company. That means they've got no business. They're not making any revenues yet. They're still getting things put together. And something I want to point out just as a key point of interest that is $2.48 for a pink shell. They have no money. You can go up to the QB where your financials are audited. They are literally making millions of dollars every quarter, and they are cheaper than that. So I do find that an interesting price for a pink shell. Now, I did say this is a George play, George Sharp. You've heard me mention him a few times. Him and Karen Courier like to save dead companies. They find companies that management have abandoned. You can tell who they are because once they abandon them, there's no one to file the filings. And when you don't file, the OTC markets yank you off and put you in the expert markets, which is time out until you file and catch up. Well, if there's no management, it's never going to catch up and it's never going to get back on the market and it's going to die. So you have people like George Sharp who go to the courts and take custodialship. Court grants it to them, not ownership, custodialship. They've got to fix it up and clean it up, and they'll get paid for doing that. So George gets control of the company, takes care of all the filings, any dirty laundry he finds at his expense. Then he goes out, once he has it back on the market in pink, goes out and finds a company, makes a deal, a reverse merger. And then he gets his payoff, and this company starts making money, and our investments 
start making money. And that's what's going on right now. So there was a little bit of information that came out about something George did today. And I am going to share that with you in just a second. So what was the relative volume around that piece of information? Well, it doesn't look big, but it really is. 35,000 shares is what she does daily. Today, she did 339,000. I know we're only talking thousands of shares, but think of it this way. That is 10 times her normal volume or a thousand percent increase. That means there has been a thousand percent increase in attention being given to this company. So you may want to look at it before it becomes a million, right? What is the share structure on this company? Well, hot diggity dog, it's Christmas early. <laughs> We got a float, let's just call it 16 million. I go to the unrestricted shares. That is pretty much as close as you're going to get to the float. 16 million out of 236. That means 220 million are for the insiders. So they've got a lot of belief for this company too. Financials, we know there's nothing there. You can see for yourself, it's a shell company. They got nada. There's no disclosures outside of their financials. That's really all we got here. And there is no news, absolutely none. What we do have is a court docket. That's what you're looking at here. This is a screenshot of a portion of a court docket. It keeps a history of a court case as it comes before the courts. And this one goes all the way back to September of 2021. And we're looking at the very bottom. That is for June 14th and July 5th. And this is actually George Sharp. You can't see the top of the form, but this is George Sharp in court asking the court to do things to help him get this company fixed. And down here at the bottom, he is asking for shares to be canceled of the Stratus stock. And he's asking for it to be done quickly. That's basically what you got there. Now, these court dockets aren't easy to find. I'll give you that. I'll grant you that. They're not in press releases. They're not in filings. You're lucky if you do find them on Twitter. Honestly, most of the time you have to pay to see these. There is a site called filings.re. I think it's like $40 a month. You can get all the court dockets brought to you from every com uh, company right to your screen real quick and easy, simple. All their filings, when they're changing status, reverse splits, forward splits, lots of great information. Or, if you got the time, you can sign up and get an account at every Secretary of State's office. There's one in every state. Nevada, Maryland, California. And most of them are free, but you would have to go to every single site and see if they had any dockets on these companies. Or you could pay somebody who just brings it all in together and all you have got to do is look at the list of the companies and what courts they've been in and what the dockets are. And that's what we've got right here. So we see that he has requested it and judicial officer motion to cancel shares motion. It looks like it's being approved. Don't quote me on that. I'm not a lawyer. But in either case, all it took was a little bit of information about this company. He's going to be taking shares away, but I don't know if they're outstanding shares, if they're authorized shares, or if they're the float. Wouldn't that be great? Take that 16, actually it's 15.5 million down to anything less, that'd be outstanding. But that was all it took to get this stock running today was this court docket and the fact that he wants to take shares off of the company's stock. Ta-da! So let's go take a look at that chart. Chart doesn't look too bad, actually. This is ticker SRNW, right? We've got a six-month, four-hour chart there. Unlike the usual, our low bubble's back here on this side of the chart. We got 10 cents as our low. And today we had our high bubble, $2.75. Now she has been climbing ever so gently and slowly. Has had a couple of dips, but she is climbing. The trend is slow. However, I'd say in the last 15 days, she has been picking up momentum. And today we had a launch. Houston, we have no problems. <laughs> This thing launched today. Looks like it gained almost an entire dollar on our price. MACD is ripping. That is shooting way up. RSI is in the overbought. It's coming down right now, but still high up there. And our CCI, our Commodities Channel Index, is well over 200, which is excellent. That is excellent. 20-day, one-hour view. So there's that dip. She came down deep under the 200, jumped high over the 200, then landed on it on both feet. She started running, got on top of the 20, which is the orange, kept her speed going, 
launched up onto the 10, the blue, and really got some speed going and caught her wings. Thank you, Red Bull. And she launched. Technicals are strong in the MACD. RSI is still overbought. CCI is calming down a bit. Let's look at that five day, five minutes. See how she ended at the back half of the day. So we do have a real nice gentle climb here. It was sitting on the 50, then it was sitting on the 200. The smaller the SMA it's sitting on, the better for us. So she is picking up and getting lighter and lighter, and then the helium day hits. She took off, went sideways, waiting for that 20 rather than fall, and now it's nice. It wasn't the 50 it was after, it was the 20. Bounced off that 20, got some more air, came down, hit the 50, a good strong support, bounced up and hit a high. We got that high bubble, then she had a big strong pullback off of that high bubble. Put a little bit of fear into people. Right now it looks like she is trying to recover and come back up. We got a crossover right there imminent on the five minute. RSI is a bit weak right now. That is from the pullback. Remember your RSI is your price line. That's what it is. It is just laid out in a line rather than bars. So when the price falls, the RSI falls with it. When the price goes up, the RSI goes up. So yeah, we'll want to see that go up. It most likely will. Our CCI is pointed up. That's good. You want it actually pointed up. That means growth is happening. If it's coming down, it means it's, it's lessening. But where it sits, down here at the bottom, is bad. You're losing. This is neutral area, but you've got to pass the neutral to get to the gain area, which is where it's heading right now. So it actually looks good with a soft catalyst. Yeah, they were hard facts, no doubt about it, but we don't know how much and from where. But people are watching this stock. $2.48 for a shell company that's pink. I don't get it. We see companies doing business, making strong revenues on the pink, even the QB that are selling for a lot less than that. So you may want to keep SRNW just to see what it does. It had a good pop today, which I wouldn't have thought it would, but it did. Looks like we actually got up to, uh, what was its total gains today? Went from about $1.90 up to two seventy-five. dollars So $19.27, about 33, 40% gains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she was at 40%, pulled back to 33 so 40% gains on a shell company with very little news. All right, let's take a look at that third company that had strong trade action today, meaning lots of investors are watching and playing this stock. Now this stock too had a lot of trades today, not as many as the other two, but this had 227 trades today and did almost a million shares. This is MSVI, Marijuana Strategic Ventures. Now, don't get thrown by the name. Really, that's what this is all about. They've had a name change. News did come out today. They're changing their ticker. They're changing their name. Not a material change. They're not gaining any revenues from this, but they're changing operations. They're going to be doing a different business. And normally, you do that because you're going to get better revenues. So, she finished the day at 11.5 cents with 64% gains. She did have much stronger gains earlier. She has had a big fall, but there is a secondary reason I am showing this to you. She's on the pink tier, she's current, and she's got both of those green ticks I'm telling you to always look for. So everything looks really good here. Now, as I said, the company has news today. They're changing their name, they're changing their ticker. So this is not what they do anymore. This is what they do. They've actually got the description updated, but they haven't changed the ticker and the name yet. Mushrooms Inc. is a publicly held company that is actively supporting the growth of the mushroom market through acquisitions of and collaborations with pioneers and innovators in the mushroom industry. Now pay attention to the ne this next one. A subtle point is made. This rapidly growing market has many untapped avenues for the creation of environmentally beneficial products and health products. So they said products and health products. Now, when we think of mushrooms outside of spaghetti sauce, you know, those kind of mushrooms, we think of psychedelics. You know, we think of LSD and stuff like that. But I've also been following mushrooms, and I see there's mushroom beverages now, there's mushroom coffee. So there's lots of different foods. But they've got something novel. 
something you don't eat that they're doing with mushrooms. And I thought, well, that's pretty bloody interesting. This could be a whole new sector. First mover advantage as far as I've seen so far. And I'm going to share that with you here in just a second. So what was the relative volume around their news today? Pretty bloody big. Geez, they jumped from 15,000 to almost a million shares. What is that, like uh, 60 times her normal volume? Pretty impressive. Share structure, what do we got down here? No, really? It is, 1.4 million shares, absolutely is. Super duper, absolutely on the floor float, 1.4 million. Folks, if this thing starts to run again, I wouldn't want to miss it. That is a super duper low float that doesn't take a lot of activity. Now, think of this. They've got 34 outstanding, 34 million outstanding shares. That is all the shares out there. Now, 32 million of them are restricted. That means they can't go on the open market. We have 1.5 million shares actually out there. Today, we sold, oh, that's not what I want to see. Today we sold just shy of a million. Now they have, what is it? 1.4. Today they did one. Tomorrow if they do two million, they have to sell every single share in the float and then get more. If they do 10 million, which isn't very much folks, not really, right? They're gonna have to sell this six times. You're gonna have to sell the entire float, which means people who are buying the shares right now will probably have to sell them back to us if we want to buy them. There's not going to be a lot of shares. Supply and demand can get wicked and the price can get really high because people refuse to sell. So we start putting in higher bids. And before you know it, you've got a run going, a serious surge. So I like 1.5 million shares by all means. What are their financials? <laughs> they barely made any money last year. $5,000. Remember those three zeros. Quarterly, absolutely nothing. They're not doing anything. Well, let me see. That's right. That's March of this year. So they definitely need a change of operations. They need to start making some money. Disclosures. They are current on their financials, so we don't have to jump in there. Unless you want to learn about the company. Then you jump in the most quarterly report or annual report and learn everything you can about the company uh no we got nothing here since 2017 so let's go take a look at that news so we've got news here going all the way back to 2018 and it looks like hemp process medical marijuana strategic ventures which is a marijuana company so they were working with marijuana all the way up here until january of this year and then in March, April, they started selling modular units in the USA. And then they reached a deal for emergency housing with these units. That was right up until May. And now, in July, they announced a name change to Mushroom Inc. Let's look at that news. They tell us that Marijuana Strategic Ventures has announced today that effective June 27th of this year, the company has officially changed its name to Mushrooms Inc., which will be ticker M-Y-C-O, MICO. In addition to changing the company's corporate name to Mushrooms Inc., the company announces the appointment of a new chief executive officer, a new CEO, Kimberly Carlson, focused on implementing a new business model based on functional mushrooms. Now, this is where it got interesting for me, folks. They tell us down here, the CEO, I'm quoting her, we see components of mushrooms successfully replacing leather, fiberglass, insulation, packaging materials, and so much more. This is a blossoming world that is just awakening into the minds of the consumer. The health benefits are continuing to unfold and the well-established contributions to wellness are being embraced in the marketplace. We have divided our current business efforts into three major categories, research and development, innovation, and health. I believe this tri-focus will enable Mushrooms, Inc. to best develop and implement and share the benefits for mind, body, and environment. We are also excited to announce we have launched our new website, MushroomInc.com. Now, in case you missed it, it was right there, folks. They are going to use mushrooms to successfully replace leather, fiberglass insulation and packaging materials 
Phew. Uh, leather, leather out of mushrooms. Very interesting. And packaging materials, fiberglass insulation, they can actually replace it. I'm very interested. Now, I've actually heard of making batteries out of mushrooms. And the longer you use the battery, the stronger it gets. You know all those dimples, those hollow holes that are inside mushrooms? Those get bigger, and that is where the electricity is made. And the bigger they get, the more electricity it makes. So there's a lot of possibilities with this company. I don't know where they're going to go. Obviously, they're covering food and <laughs> goods, like leather, insulation, and packaging materials. So let's go take a look at that chart and see what it looks like after it had a good run and gave away most of it. Anybody up for a toboggan run in the middle of summer? This is sticker MSVI, six-month, four-hour chart, and she has been running downhill all this time. She has a high back here of $2.90 and a low of just over $0.04, cents, and we are at $0.11.5 cents right now. She has been falling hard, and with all this price action back here, we don't see any volume. No volume for these huge jumps up and down. Here, with little trade action going on, you know, you don't see any movement in the price. That's when our volume is coming into the picture. Also coming into the picture is our 200-day SMA and our 200-day haul. These are the same. They're both averaging out 200 days, but this one does 200 days even. This one does 200 days and then gives a little extra weight to current prices. So you normally find this is closer to the price. Technicals were strong part of the day, weak the rest of the day. Looking at that 20-day view, hasn't been doing anything until today. The news was all the catalyst it needed. It took off, had a huge jump here, and then fell back very fast. Technicals were blazing when she had the jump and has been pulling back ever since. Five minute, five day. All right, so she closed yesterday at about seven cents. And today she hit a high of 32 cents. You're looking at 450% jump. Oh my God, folks. And she ended the day at 64. So she gave a lot of it away. She definitely took off first thing in the morning. And when did she hit that high? That was at 10.20. 10.20 in the morning, she hit her high and then fell hard. She fell all the way back here to 23 cents from 32. So almost a dime. Boom, in five minutes. And then it was downhill all the way. She tried to hang on to this 20-day SMA, lost it, went right through the 50 without any respect to it whatsoever, which is surprising because, as I said, I anticipate these to gravitate. Now, maybe that's it. Maybe that is the gravitation that pulled it right down to it, and it's going to come back up to it now. does look like we're getting ready for a turnabout here. We look like we have a crossover. I see that's pointing up, that's pointing up. So maybe that's exactly what happened. Honestly, this may have just gravitated to the 50-day, and it'll end up somewhere in this region when it's all done and said. Now, this stock has a super-duper low float, so any news it gets, any tweets it gets, could stir this up. Even a simple technical on the chart might get this thing running, and that's why you have blasts off like that where you get 400% gains in less than an hour. That is unbelievable. Anybody who got into this, anytime you took gains in here, you were doing well. You know, maybe at 200, 300% gains, you should have sold. You know, you don't know it's going to go to 400%. You don't know how far it's going to go. So don't get greedy when this happens, folks. But I do like the activity. We see that when she gets a little volume, there wasn't a ton of it today, when she gets a little volume, she runs. And with only 1.4 million shares, if she sells 10 million, 20 million, 40 million shares, those shares are going to become valuable because people want them, but you can't get them. And the price will fly. So keep your eye on MSVI, which will become MYCO, M-Y-C-O. That will be their new ticker. It should happen any time now, so don't lose hold of where this stock is. MYCO. That's the one that has the 1.4 million shares. So those are three of the stocks that we're running today based on trades. That's how I found them, just going down that magic column over there at the otcmarkets.com website on their current markets link that I showed you. 
that column, the sooner you get to it, the sooner you start making gains. It really is a telltale sign. The more trades, the more people. The more people, the more price action, the better chance you're going to make strong gains. Now, we know that a stock can run for a lot of different reasons, and that's why I try to give you a lot of different information. That news at the very beginning of the video, I play that well because I want you to keep up with the news. That's current news and a couple of days behind because it's still valid news. But I do it there because I'm talking about a lot of stuff you may have heard a hundred times before. So I appreciate your tolerance there and I hope I'm paying you off for it. Thanks, folks. Remember, DD is your friend. You can't know too much. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks. Thank you.